There was a point in time when you, I, I know you had a talk with Carlos Santana that yeah, made a big change sure. in your life. And then later, I know that you spoke with Mike Zito and made a big change in his life. Sure. And All if you I, could tell us about that. Well, you know, Carlos Santana came up to me and we were in East Berlin, Germany. And we were staying in the same hotel as Santana. And I was with John May all at the time, playing guitar. And um, Carlos, I guess, had been at the gig, and he came up and said, Hey, man, what are you doing? You have a gift for music. You've been given a gift. You're in a famous band. You're in a band that there's 100,000 guitar players around the world would, would give anything to be playing lead guitar with John Mayall. And... Um, you're so drunk on stage, and he went like this, you're doing this to the one who gave you the gift, and you need to take it seriously, and you need to nurture it. And he gave me a book to read, and he said, there's religion in the book, and there's also psychology in the book. You can take what you want out of the book. And um, I stayed up all night and read it, came down and we spent two days in this hotel having some really great talks about life and about um, trying to develop whatever abilities you have, um, that everyone has a gift for something, and that if you work hard at developing that gift and take it seriously and nurture it, um, that the way you make the world a little bit better place is you go out and you share that gift. Maybe you can be a great car mechanic. I don't know. But everybody has something that they can be good at. And, and you make the world a little bit better by sharing that with the world and being serious about it. And um, I went to John Mayall and said, you, you'll never see me drunk again. And um, this July 9th, I'm going to hit 30 years of sobriety. And... Um, that was You're, a real revolutionary change in your life. Though, oh, right? that was huge. I had been through a couple of years of heroin addiction. I had been alcoholic, raging, um, cocaine. I, I was doing it all, and I was out of control for a long time. Um, and he really got through to me. But there, there were other people in my life, too, who were sort of telling me the same thing. One of them was my dear friend, Richie Hayward, who was the drummer in Little Feet. And uh, he actually, when Little Feet broke up after Lowell George died, they broke up for a couple of years. Um, Richie played in my band and we were dear friends. And um, he was sober and he kept saying to me, man, at the beginning of the night, you, you play great. And as the night wears on and you keep drinking and snorting blow, your playing just falls apart, you know. And, but the one that really got, got through to me was that night with Santana. And also Mr. Mayall. Mr. Mayall hung in there with me. He was sober. Um, and he put up with a lot from me. Um, a lot of out of control behavior, you know, and um, but he would say, you know, hey Walter, you know, you you need to get yourself together, you know. But God bless the man for not firing me from his band and uh, just sending me down the road. He believed in me and he stood behind me and he supported me, and he's still a dear friend, you know. Um, so you know, some years later. Um, I became friends with Mike Zito, and um, I thought he was so amazing, and we did a lot of shows together, and I watched him um, on the self-destructive path, and I just decided I, I need to talk to Mike the same way Carlos spoke to me. I met Walter in 1998 when my first record came out in St. Louis. And we had just just made a CD, and we were you know trying to do something with it. And um, this station in St. Louis called KC ninety five. Uh, actually, I mentioned it earlier. Really awesome, great rock and roll station. 
And at the time, late 90s, that's I think that's probably the height or heyday of blues rock guitar. Uh, that's what everybody talks about, the, the good old days, you know. And um, so Walter Trout had kind of broken through, and they were playing him on, on Casey along with Stevie Ray Vaughan and Kenny Wayne Shepard, and, and he had like a big, you know, hit in St. Louis. So he was coming to town to do um, a concert at uh, one of the, the premier uh, – venues at the time um so we wanted to open up for him because i had been a fan of his for a long time i was a fan of roof records I was a fan of luther allison it's a long story but i was a you know big fan of walters um so they said this is a little side note but his he his management wrote back and said well we have to hear their band you know before we can see if we'll let them play or not you know so they we sent a CD to them, and then Walter wrote back, and he, uh, I can't use his words on your show, uh, but in Walter uh, Trout fashion, it was, F, yeah, they can. Like, he was all for it. He loved it. He loved that it was really rocking. And uh, so we had a great show and, and uh, became friends that night. I was, like, really, it was a big deal because I was so into his music. He was already so... He was already very famous in the blues world, but then he became like, got like this rock fame, you know. It was, it was I don't know, 3,000 people. It was a big venue, you know. Um, so it was, it was cool. So every time he came to town, um, they called and I opened up for him. And it meant a lot. And then I started traveling around. I went to Springfield, Missouri and opened up for him. I went to, uh, uh, to different places around the Midwest if he was coming through and I'd open up shows, you know. And he'd always let me get up and, and uh, play at the end of the night, and we would, you know, rock out and jam. So between 1998 and, and 2002, I went from, you know, a guy that drank every night but was still having fun, like still, you know, I'd occasionally fall asleep at the bar and they have to drive me home or whatever. But somewhere between there and 2002, it got really bad. Like I got really bad on drugs and stuff. So the last time I had played with him was at the Hard Rock in St. Louis, and um, and I was really whacked out. I don't I don't remember if I uh, oh maybe I showed up late and I didn't have the gear and I didn't have a band and and some musicians had to show. It was really thrown together and, and uh, I played really bad and and um, they stopped me early, you know, and, and said, okay, that's good. Getting, Walter Trout's coming up next, everybody. Um, and when I I got done, I was really high that night. And I was standing there on the side waiting for him to come out of the dressing room so he'd say, hey, you know, stick around. We're going to play, you know. And he came out and he looked at me and he goes, you're not playing. Don't go nowhere. And I was like, oh, oh. And then they went up and played. Um, so I didn't know what that meant. Uh, so I stuck around. And at the end of the night, he uh, he came and got me and he threw me in a booth. And he said, man, what is, you know, what's going on with you? Like, what are you doing? Uh, I heard you, you left your wife threw you out. You're not with your kids. You're 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 obviously on on dope or something. Like what is going on? Like you, you know, sound you don't sound good. And uh, you know I I don't know what I said. I hemmed and hawed or something. I was I remember I was still high and I remember thinking, man, this is a real bummer, man. <laughs> like I had a good one going here and you're really stepping on it, you know. <laughs> And he, he said, look, Mike, he said, uh, you know, you're, um, you can't play with me anymore. That's what he said. That's what got my, I remember got my attention where it was like kind of funny. And I thought, well, this is kind of fun, you know, like look at this guy's. And then it got real because it was that really hurt, you know, like he said, I'm sorry, you can't play anymore. Like I can't let you play with me until you get, you know, your act together. He said, you have a responsibility to your family and your children and he said but and you have a responsibility to the music you know you're you're someone i really believe in i believe in your ability and your talent and and you're just throwing it all away it's you know you're not being responsible with your gift and he went on to tell me that that's what carlos santana had shared with him when he was with john mayall that you know um santana a recap uh, more or less I, I, santana went backstage after the show and like got him and threw him up against the wall and started chastising him and telling him, you know, 
a very similar thing. I think I think Santana's words were, "You're giving God the finger," you know, to Walter. So he, you know, he explained it to me. He was really stern about it, and then he said, "Look, I'll when you're ready to help yourself, I'll help you." He said, "But you know, you need to get your act together." You know, uh, so it was about an hour long, and then he left, and I was like pretty bummed out <laughs> and and things went it was already bad then it kind of went downhill pretty quick after that uh so i mean i did not get sober the next day or, or clean the next day but when i did like a year and a half later and i started uh getting going to, to recovery meetings and he was like one of the first people i called that was not in my family you know like uh, i started getting everything together he was one of the first people i called to share with them, you know, what I thought was good news, you know, that I started going to these meetings and, and, you know, he's, uh, Walter is, is really, you know, if you know him, he, he can act really gruff and like, like this. And, and then man, he can like start crying at the drop of a dime. If he gets moved, you know, emotionally, he's very emotional and he's very like, he wears his feelings out. You know, it's what makes him such an awesome performer, you know? And uh, man, he he started, uh, and I know he doesn't mind me sharing this with you. You know, he started crying on the phone and telling me how much he loved me and how wonderful this was. And I started crying, and, and you know, and, and he said, if uh, any time, night or day, if you think you need to have a drink or you need some dope or something, um, you know, you call me, you call me, and I'll help you. And uh, and it's been like that ever since. And that was in two thousand three. You know. Um, because back then he was trying to help me get a recording contract in the late nineties with roof records. It was real close. And then I know he, he, uh, he went back to roof records and said, yeah, maybe not, not now this guy. And I'm so glad cause I would have ruined it. It would have been, you know, terrible. So it's really great all these years later that I am with roof records and, uh, and then, um, you know, he played on my new album, which has never happened before. And then I played on his new album. Yeah, fantastic it's, track on his thank release. You. Really one of the top tracks on a Thanks. very stellar album. It's a great album, yeah. And there's a lot of a lot of great uh, lot of guitar great players, players on but, there. But I love that he came and he goes, Hey, but but you know, we could do something yeah. we're gonna do something more than um, just play blues, you know. Um, not that that I don't mean that the wrong way. He said I've got some like he had something in mind. No, he wrote he's been wanting us to do. For each player and, yeah, and yeah. what he wrote for you is very special. And but to to continue that story, I think this is so wonderful because <clears throat> what your life has become, what Walter's life has become since yeah. these changed events, and that you continue to pass it on uh, the the help that I know you've given to so many people who are dealing well, with how... substance abuse problems, right? Or uh, counseling people on death row. Sure, you've given back in so many ways. It's very heartwarming. That well, that's how it works. I mean, they don't. Mm -hmm. That's not just a a, a cheap. Uh, you know, phrase that you got to give it away to, to, to keep it, you know, I mean, it's, it's the truth. I realize now that's what Walter was doing and, and Walter continues to inspire me. Um, I mean, you know, everything that he's gone through, it's amazing uh, that he did it sober, like that he's gone through, you know, almost to death's door and all of this. And, um, and he's back and better than ever just rocking.